Okay, let's do our first example using um, or first example on forces on curved surfaces. In this problem we have um, some sort of tank looking thing. And down here, this is just a rigid ground, I guess. Um, it's filled with water and there's a gate here. And it's hinged here at this point. Uh, we can call that point H for hinge. Um, and, and there's a force P that's pushing here to keep the gate from falling this way and releasing all the water. And the water is actually six feet high from the ground because the gate has a radius of six feet, right? And again, we're working with just zero or just regular atmospheric pressure. So the pressure at the top would be just zero. Now the width the gate is 18 feet so just imagine this gate um, this gate is a cross-section view and it's 18 feet maybe into the camera or into the video and they're asking uh, what's the force P needed to keep the gate from falling and they give us the specific weight of water is 62.4 pound per foot cubed <clears throat> Um, so the very first thing, oh, and they, they also say to neglect the weight of the gate. So we don't need to worry about the weight of the gate. But if we did, you know, you'd place it at the centroid of, of this gate and, and do your equations from there. But we don't need to worry about that, so let's, let's not. Um, the very first thing um, is to draw a free body diagram. Now, here we need to find B, or P, I'm sorry, P, the force P. And what we can do is actually just break this whole chunk of gate plus water and draw a free body diagram of that. So what I'm saying is let's, let's break this and let's draw a free body diagram of <clears throat> this chunk which would include the gate plus the water. So it would look something like this. All right here's the, here's the water chunk. And then here is the gate, however you draw a gate. So this is water, H2O, this whole chunk is water. And then here you have the gate. Now at H we have um, HY and HX, right, just our pin, oops, HX, that's our just regular pin because it's a hinge and a hinge only has two forces. And we have our force P. And we also have the weight of this water chunk, H2O. We'll call it W. So weight of H2O. And at the top, we actually have zero pressure, right? Because it's at the top of the free surface. But on the left side here, this surface actually has a pressure distribution. And that pressure distribution uh, looks something like this. So it's zero here at the top. And and it looks like this, right? The pressure is greatest at the bottom. Right? So just imagine this quarter circle solid that's 18 feet long, or that's the width. <clears throat> and on the left side, you have a pressure distribution. Now, <clears throat> the pressure, the force of the pressure actually acts at the centroid of this triangle looking thing, but we always take the pressure of the centroid of the surface. So if we were to replace this green uh, pressure distribution with either a force and couple, we could do that. We could, you know, the FP equation and the CP equation, we can do that. And that would be located at the centroid of this surface. So it'd be right in the middle of this, this length of water. But if we know the centroid of the pressure distribution, if we know the centroid of this thing, this green triangle, we can find the pressure at the centroid of the surface and replace it at the centroid of the pressure distribution and not even have to worry about the couple or the moment. <clears throat> so what I'm saying is, let's, let's redraw the free body diagram. Here's the, I'll draw it here. Here's the gate. Let's just uh, make it a little thicker. And here's the water chunk. Here's the chunk of water. Now, the 
weight of the water would be H2O, right? And it, it would actually be a distance of, remember, from statics, uh, 4R over 3 pi. And then we have our force P. And then we have our reaction forces HY and HX, right? And then here we actually have uh, FP acting here, right? Because this is the pressure acting on the centroid of the surface at the centroid of this pressure distribution. And remember, the only... Um, a little tip, we would only want to replace this pressure distribution at a known location if we know the centroid of the pressure distribution. And in this case, it's a triangle, and we know what the centroid of a triangle is. It's, it's one-third from the base, right? And that's why we can do that. So, we drew our free body diagram. <clears throat> Uh, the first thing I want to do is find the weight of the water. So find the weight of the H2O. So the weight of the H2O. Well, weight, we have this quarter circle cylinder that's 18 feet high or 18 feet wide. <clears throat> so the first thing I'd want to find is the volume of that. So the volume of that would be one quarter, right? Because it's, it's not a full circle, it's a quarter of a circle, so one quarter. Um, pi r squared, right? Pi times r squared, and r is 6 feet, so 6 squared, pi r squared. That's the area, right? This is the area. And we're going to multiply the area times the width, which is 18 feet, to get the volume. And it's all of that multiplied by 1 over 4, because it's a quarter of a full uh, circular cylinder. And, and we get 162 pi. Uh, feet cubed, and that's the volume. Now, remember, if you multiply the volume by the specific weight of um, the liquid or the fluid or even a solid, we can find the weight of that solid or chunk of water in this case. And so let's multiply 162 pi times 62.4 pound per foot cubed and, and remember, this, this is actually in units of feet cubed, so the feet cube and the feet cube cancel, and that gives us pounds. So the weight of the H2O would be equal to um, 31,757.7 pounds, okay? Okay, so we know the weight of the H2O. We need to find, oops, we need to find P. Um, and we could try to find H and X and H and Y, but we don't really need to because we'll take the moment about H um, to find P. So what we need to figure out is FP. What's FP? And remember, remember the equation we use to find FP, or the force um, on a submerged surface. And technically this is a surface and it is submerged because it's within the water. Remember this is the water in the gate. So FP would be the pressure at the centroid of the surface times the area of that surface. Now the pressure at that centroid, um, remember this, this surface, this length is 6 feet, so it's 6 feet of water, and um, the centroid of that surface would be at 3 feet from the top, right? So 3 feet times 62.4. And this would give us the pressure, right, and the height, or the change in height times um, the specific weight. And then the area of that surface is, well, it's 6 feet in depth, and it's 18 feet wide. So it would be 6 times 18, and that would, this would give us our area. And if we solve for FP, uh, we get, I believe, 20,007, oops, 20,200 and 17.6 pounds, okay? So we have FP, we have the weight of the water, we don't know P, but if we take the moment about H, we can solve for P, so let's let's do that. I'll do it in a different color. Um, <laughs> There's not much of a different color, it's purple, but that's okay. We'll take the summation of moments about H, and I'll say, counterclockwise is positive, is equal to zero, <clears throat> and the first um, 
force, maybe we can do is, is FP. And FP is creating a clockwise uh, moment, so we'll do negative FP times, well, what's the distance? It would be 2 feet, right? Because the total length is 6 feet, and the centroid of this pressure distribution is a third from the base, so it'd be 2 feet, right? Because 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 6. Um, so that'd be 2 feet. Plus, let's do P next. It'd be P times, well, it'd be 6 feet, right? And then, lastly, the water is going to create a clockwise moment, so that's going to be negative. That's going to be the weight of the H2O times the distance. Well, the distance from H um, to the, the, the weight of the water would be 4R over 3 pi, and the R is 6, so it would be 4 times 6 over 3 pi is equal to 0. And if we plug in the weight of the water into here, and if we plug in oops, the uh, pressure force oops, into, into there, into here, and into here, we can solve for P, set that equal to zero, solve for P, and the, the force P required to hold the gate without it falling, falling down, would be about 20,200 pounds.